conclusion is that it's produced, these layers are producing too much fluid. All right, it's accumulating too much, and it's getting, for, it's that, that space that I was telling you about is getting bigger and bigger with fluid in there, and it's going to compromise, it's going to push against the lungs, and you're not going to be able to take a deep breath because something's occupying that space. Okay? We could have a hemothorax. You fall down from a ladder, and you break a blood vessel, and it's going to put blood into that area. So hemo meaning blood, thorax in the thoracic cavity. So you have this blood that's building up in between the two pleura. A pneumothorax, you could fall off a ladder instead of breaking a blood vessel, you're going to you're going to uh, break one of the air sacs there, and some of the air sacs could put air into that space. And acts like a valve. The air can go out into that space, but it can't go back out and breathe it out. It stays in there. So you have this large volume of air that's going to compress against the lungs. All right. So the alveoli or the air sacs can rupture. Someone who's got emphysema, it happens quite often with that. Okay. The treatment for this is to remove that area, whatever it is, blood, air, tumor, fluid, whatever it is. So I won't ask you about this, but you've probably heard about it. You're going to do something called thoracosynthesis. You put a needle in that area take the needle out and then put a tube in there, we call it a chest tube, and we leave it there and let everything come out. It's this thing. Well, I'll show you. Here's where the lung is and here's a hemothorax. The blood fills up, fills up, and fills up, and now you've got this almost collapsed lung. The lung can't expand because you've got a blood clot that's, that's restricting it from expanding. Here you have air that escaped into this area but can't go back into the lung. So they have all this air that's pressing against here, that lung is going to have problems expanding. That's a collapsed lung, and you can see it over here too. So what you do in a case like this is you lean the patient forward to make sure that the ribs could actually have more space that you could work at, you know, kind of opens up the spaces when you lean this way. And what you do is you put a needle in here. Uh, don't do this at home. I mean, <laughs> but this is what they do in the hospital. So they'll put a needle in here, remove it, and put a tube there, and a tube goes down into a bag here, and if it's blood or extra fluid, it'll go into this area here, and, you know, that could take anywhere, it depends on how bad it is, you know, three to ten days to get all that there. If there's air here, like a pneumothorax, we'll put water in here, and what do you think is going to happen to the water? What are you going to see? No? What are you going to see? Bubbles! Yeah, you'll see bubbles go in there. And when you stop seeing the bubbles, then all the air came out. You take another chest x-ray and you've got a fully expanded lung. Hey, no problem. All done. All right. It's more complicated than that. But basically, that's what's going on. Okay? All right? Mesothelioma. We're almost done with this. Mesothelioma. Uh, is it lung cancer? You're seeing a lot of commercials on TV about mesothelioma and things like that. Mesothelioma is not lung cancer. I don't think they're saying it that way, but I think they're misleading the public thinking that way. Mesothelioma is not lung cancer. Mesothelioma is cancer that originates from the pleural cavity, from the pleura itself, the visceral or parietal layers. Can it lead to lung cancer? Sure, but it's not lung cancer. It's a rare cancer that comes from the pleural, the pleura itself. Okay. And the risk factor is chronic exposure to asbestos. Now, I just learned about this two years ago. By I just assumed everyone knew what asbestos is. Just a show of hands. Just raise your hand if you know what asbestos is. Yeah, see, only about half the class. And that's fine. Let me just explain to you very briefly what asbestos is since you're going to the medical realm. Asbestos is a chemical that they used to put, well, it doesn't burn. So they said, this is a wonderful thing. Why don't we just, and this is back in the early 1900s, why don't they just add that to some of the plaster that's in the houses? Because if, there, if it does catch on fire, the house won't burn down. Beautiful thing. All right? In fact, it was my idea to come up with flags that were made of asbestos. You won't have to worry about burning the flag. It's supposed to be a joke. All right, you guys are done. <laughs> so... What they did was they built houses with that, and then over about 20 or 30 or 40 years, people living in these houses were breathing in this asbestos that were breaking off from there and going into the air and started realizing that this asbestos was getting in the lungs and causing cancer. But it's not lung cancer, it's called a mesothelioma. Okay? 
So that's what it is. Um, there are a lot of houses and a lot of buildings that still have asbestos. They're supposed, if you're buying a house, they're supposed to let you know they're just moving forward. They're not building. They found out about this thing, uh, I guess, in the 60s and 70s, if that was what's happened. So ever since then, they stopped doing the asbestos housing. But there's a lot of houses that do have it. Yeah? I, I think I've heard it's also pronounced uh, asbestos. I think that's what they said. No, asbestos, asbestos. It's the same thing. I guess thing. it's the same thing. I always okay. call it asbestos. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't, I, it's spelled it, the same way. It's spelled the same thing. It's the yeah. same thing. I used to feel stuff all the time. Uh, so not, yeah. <laughs> or if you wear a mask, you know. Well, I used to I, do I, home remodeling with my father. We sold a lot of asbestos. You're not going to get It's like, I'm not encouraging people to smoke, but you don't smoke one cigarette and get cancer. It's when you breathe this for many years, the, the asbestos, that's what happens. And if you work with it. Oh, I, I didn't work with it directly, but I, work, I used to work on job sets where they're remediating environmental hazards. And yeah. asbestos was a was primarily on a lot of the sites I was on. A lot of them, yeah. Yeah, so I wear dust masks and whatnot, respirators. Right. Now that you know about it, right. Yeah. Okay? So that's what that is. Um, but it's really, a mesothelioma is a cancer of the bristle and parietal layers. Not just of the lung, not above, just in the pleural cavity. It's, it's usually caused over there. It's mostly affected because you're inhaling this asbestos or asbestos. Um, but that's, that's what's happening. But don't get... Uh, upset when someone says that they could have mesothelioma in the pericardium, in the peritoneal cavity, in the testes. Because like I said, parietal and visceral layers are not just found in the chest, they're found elsewhere. We just see it a lot more in the lung area because they usually breathe it in there. Okay? So this is just cross-sections of, uh, of the abdominal cavities. I won't ask you about those. It's just FYI kind of thing. Okay? Um, now, really quick about this, regional terms, just known. That's all I gotta tell you, all right? I'm not, I, I can't sit here and go through it. This is probably one of the hardest things for you to do, but I guarantee you'll learn it in about an hour or two. No more is it called the wrist. You now have to call it the carpal area. These bones in here, you know what they're called? The carpals. No more is this called the thigh. It's now called the femoral area. Why? Because this bone is called the femur. Not a belly button or navel, it's called the umbilicus, okay, or umbilical area. The cervical area is the neck, all right? Uh, the popliteal is behind the knee. I would just, you gotta know this, all right? Uh, and, and me sitting here and just pointing out these is not gonna help. There are games that you could play where they have, let's say, a person up here and they have the word antibrachial. So you're going to put it up here, ah, you bring it over here, ah, you bring it over here, ding, 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 kind of thing. So there's a lot of games. Type in in the Google like uh, anatomy direction, uh, anatomy regional terms um, game, and you'll see a lot of games on there. Okay. All right. Uh, abdominal regions, pretty easy on this too. We could have nine regions or four quadrants. Nine regions. You only have to memorize six, and I'll show you why. This is the umbilic uh, umbilical region. Above it is epigastric. Below it is hypogastric, also known as pubic. Over here, this is called a hypochondriac. Chondriac means uh, cartilage. And it's underneath the ribs where the ribs have cartilage. I would call it something else, but that's what it is. So that's the hypochondriac area, the lumbar area, and this is called the iliac or inguinal area. So if you know these six, you're fine, because th these three over here are the same thing, but now this is left side, okay? So you gotta know the nine regions and the major organs that are found in there that we talked about from before, okay? You could also break up the abdominal cavity as four quadrants. Right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant. Right lower quadrant, left uh, uh, lower quadrant, okay? And know what organs are here. If someone's got Epigastric pain, you should know what's in that area. You could say stomach, you could say liver. You wouldn't say appendix. So that's where you have to put these things together, okay? And the last thing I just want to do, it only take like two minutes to do, is anatomical variation. Not everybody is the same, and we call these anomalies. Not abnormalities, anomalies. Anomalies is that anatomically they're different, but physiologically, you wouldn't even recognize it, okay? 70% of people all have a normal, well, 
the way the anatomy is in 70% of people is like this. You could have 30% of people having it different, but are completely normal. All right, so there's a variant, anatomical variant. These are anomalies and usually do not affect the function. All right, and I'll show you examples of this. It could be because there is missing muscles. It could be that we have an extra vertebra. We could have renal arteries that shouldn't be there. Here's some variations. Situs solidus means organs are all in the normal place. Maybe all of you have that. But because it's all you're all working normally, you wouldn't know if you had the other stuff, unless it's an incidental finding. My boss at one of my other jobs, she found out at 35 years old that her heart was actually not her heart, her whole body, everything was on the opposite side. So her appendix is not here, it's over here. Her heart is not leaning towards the left, it's leaning towards the right. Situs invertus is all the organs are in the opposite side. Dextrocardia, just the heart, is, on, is now leaning towards the right. Sinus perversus is any organ that's not located in a normal position. This is important because if you know that the person has situs inversus and she has pain here, that could be the appendix. In normal people, pain would not occur over here. It would happen over here. So if the person knows they have this, because even when you do this dextrocardia, when they put an EKG on the person, it's going to look all funky because it's on the opposite sides. So that's how they usually find out about this as an incidental finding. She didn't find out until, you know, 35 years old when she had her first EKG. You don't have an EKG normally on routine stuff until maybe 35 years old, okay? So this is just some examples. This is the way your normal kidney should be, but you could have one down here and one up here. You wouldn't know about that. If you have a kidney infection, it could appear down in the middle, down below. But you wouldn't think of that because that's not what the normal would be. Or you can have something called a horseshoe kidney. That I've seen a couple times too. But it works normally. Here, here's your aorta. This is the biggest artery here. You have three branches coming off this. That's 70% of the people. But you could have just two branches, but they branch off like this. They have two branches and they branch off like this. But you have four branches. Makes a difference if you're going to work in cardiovascular surgery or you're working where you're going to put a catheterization and you need to know where you're putting it into. you got to shoot a die to see if they have anomaly or are they what 70% have. Okay? All right. That's about everything.